Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Peter Vyhansky, Senior Vice President at Data Art, joins me to discuss the cloud space through the lens of COVID-19, as well as some growth trends and just how sustainable they are. Peter, it's great to see you. Welcome back to Trade Talks. It's good to see you again. Let's talk about the growth of cloud amidst the global pandemic and what have really been the drivers. Sure. Well, first of all, we are observing some growth. Apparently, I, I came across um, a forecast, an updated forecast uh, from Gartner. And based on that, it appears that they're uh, adjusting their numbers upwards for the cloud spending for 2020 uh, compared to the late 2019 prediction. We're seeing two big categories, infrastructure as a service and platform as a service combined uh, set to reach about $93.4 billion this year, which is a 5% increase from previous forecast uh, for 2020 spending, which is interesting and I, I think meaningful. Uh, also interestingly, but not surprisingly, the largest, well, rather the fastest growing category of, of cloud spending is desktop as a service. Well, understandably, you know, companies suddenly found themselves, you know, having to set up hundreds, if not thousands of their employees to work from home productively, essentially overnight. Uh, the VDI or virtual desktop infrastructure service uh, offered by the major cloud providers was basically tailor-made for this sort of situation and it delivered on the promise. So that spending is doubling in 2020 compared to 2020. Peter, do you think that growth is sustainable? Um, we shall see. Uh, it's very difficult to be certain about, like, who said it? Einstein or somebody uh, said uh, predictions are hard, especially about the future. But um, what we are seeing, I think, is well illustrated by a recent survey that I came across. The survey was conducted by Snow Software, and they reached out to about 250 enterprise IT leaders around the world, and they asked them what's happening with their cloud spending and cloud initiatives uh, during the times of the COVID pandemic, and what uh, the responses uh, indicate is, is quite interesting. So first of all, four out of five respondents are saying that they have increased their, uh, their use of the cloud during the pandemic. Two out of three are saying that even when their workforce is able to return home and we get back to some sort of normal, they are keeping those uh, applications or services that, that they stood up during the crisis. So if not quite the last straw that broke the camel's back, it appears that the crisis has been sort of a tipping factor that accelerated the pre-existing trends and plans that the companies had to adopt the cloud. Um, it is, it seems as though, even though it may have been an acute response to a crisis situation, the increased use of cloud and especially public cloud offered by the largest hyperscale providers like Azure, AWS, and Google um, may be, may be uh, becoming a permanent fixture, so to speak, a permanent feature of these companies' new IT approach and IT estate. You know, it's really interesting when you talk about work from home trends, uh, a number of technology experts such as yourself have been coming on and talking about how cloud and what we've learned with working from home is also helping to build more diverse workforces because it opens up a much broader range of, of people that can participate in the workforce. There's no doubt that that's, that's in fact uh, what's going on. And we touched upon VDI, right? Uh, desktop as a service. Clearly, uh, there's no, you have no prayer. If you don't have this robust offering that luckily was there when we needed it, um, to set up work computers for thousands of your staff to be able to productively work from anywhere in the world as long as they have uh, connectivity. And you can log into your work machine from any device, uh, be it a laptop or, or a tablet, doesn't matter. And it's the same work, uh, work machine and with the same uh, software that you need to execute and function day to day. Um, I mean, that's, that's sort of self-explanatory. What's also interesting is that we are now, yeah, we're now on Zoom. Um, Many of my colleagues, and sometimes including myself, spend most of their days on the video conferencing and collaboration tools like Zoom, like WebEx, like uh, Teams. And the only way these offerings have been able to accommodate all this massive surge of incoming demand is by having been engineered for and hosted on a very robust public cloud infrastructure. Um, it, we wouldn't have had a prayer without you know, the cloud. So we, we have cloud to, to thank for the fact that we're able to speak and see each other and, and effectively collaborate. And I agree, this is, and, and you know, I'm not being very original here, but obviously th this has changed the way we collaborate probably forever. Um, it is very clear that you can be extremely productive without needing to commute to the office. And even though face-to-face -face communication is still better, um, mm -hmm. you can be, it, it can be good enough with these wonderful sophisticated tools. So the, the combined growth in the utilization of those tools has undeniably uh, fed the uh, growth in, in cloud spending that we're observing in the market. All right, Peter, great to have you with us as always. Thanks for joining me on Trade Talks. Thank you. And thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.